Uh, hello, I'm Christina Sohatsky. I head of our, our healthcare and life sciences practice group in Saudi Arabia. And uh, today we are going to be t uh, discussing the Saudi Food and Drug Authority's most recent guidance on artificial intelligence and machine learning in medical devices. And with me today, I have two other colleagues from Saudi, and we all happen to be in Dubai for Arab Health, so taking this opportunity uh, to have a little chat. And I'll just start with Nick. I'll let you introduce yourself. Thank you, Christina. I am Nick O'Connell. I'm a partner in our digital and data practice, which is what we call our technology, media and telecommunications team. And yeah, great to be here. I do a lot of work in the cloud and data space. So it's obviously very relevant to this uh, discussion about AI in the healthcare sector. Certainly. Abdul Mohsen, why don't you give us a quick introduction? Yeah. Thank you, Christina. So I'm Abdul Mohsen Al Saleh, trainee lawyer based in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And I'm part of the healthcare and life sciences uh, sector group and enjoying ourselves here in Arab Health. And we are going to be discussing the SFDA guidance uh, around AI and medical devices. Fantastic. So as you know, uh, medical devices in Saudi Arabia, as most countries, have to be registered with the SFDA. And since you have such a close relationship with the SFDA, I thought I'd, I'd let you be the questioner so yeah. that you can really tease out the most important uh, points that are coming from, from this new guidance. So actually with that, I'm going to turn it over to yeah, you. Well, it's, it's <laughs> a pleasure to do so. So to kick us off, um, Christina, can you give us a quick overview on the kind of devices, uh, the AI and uh, machine learning devices that are covered by uh, this guidance document? Well, certainly. So. Um, the AI and machine learning technologies diagnose, manage, or predict diseases. This is what we're focused on. Um, and of course, it ultimately boils down to the intended use of the product. So if the intended use of the product fits within the, uh, the definition of a medical device, um, then it cannot be um, imported, distributed, used in Saudi unless it is registered with the SFDA and has obtained that medical device marketing authorization. Mm. In the absence of an internationally aligned framework for AI and machine learning based medical devices, how does the SFDA essentially set the minimum standards and good practice um, requirements for these devices? Yeah, I think you're referring to the, the, the clinical evaluation elements of it, and um, that is a huge question, right? So the minimum standards um, and good practices for clinically evaluating um, artificial intelligence and machine learning medical devices is drawn uh, predominantly from the WHO mm -hmm. and the International Medical Device Regulators Forum Software as a Medical Device Technical Document. Um, of course, um, the clinical evaluation of these devices is everything. Um, there, no matter the risk classification of the device, this will be part of the evaluation that the SFDA does. Um, clinical validation, right? Mm -hmm. Not only to ensure that, um, the, the outputs can be relied upon, but also to make sure they're clinically meaningful. Yeah. Um, innovation for innovation, tech for tech. What does that do for the patient? What is the point of that? And so actually these are built into the guidance uh, to make sure that these are proven, demonstrated, and that the technology, when it goes go to the patient, actually serves the intended purpose for the intended target population. So Nick, as you may well know, uh, AI and machine learning products are software driven, and that brings with it an associated mm -hmm. elevated risk in terms of data management, um, cyber and information security. Can you please tell us more about this? Yeah, sure. So obviously risk in the context of AI, particularly in a healthcare context, mm -hmm. it's a key consideration. Sure. The guidelines appreciate this. And in fact, they require that a data scientist is part of the, the multidisciplinary um, risk assessment team. So mm -hmm. it's essential to have data scientists involved in the mm -hmm. risk assessment. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the sure. first point. Mm -hmm. um, the second point relates to, you know, issues around bias and errors and that type of thing. So obviously with AI, um, the potential risk of, of bias is a, it's a big deal. Yeah. Um, as is, you know, errors in the output and, and how this is managed. Um, I think also there is an issue around the extent of confidence that people place in the, the AI. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, do they trust it too much or do they not trust it enough? So, you know, there are a lot of issues there that 
potentially they they make the whole area sort of fraught with risk, and that's why risk is so um, such an important aspect to manage. Yeah. Um, I, I guess the third observation that I would like to make on this point is that because AI, it's a relatively new thing, or at least it's widespread adoption. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very hot topic at the moment. Um, and so that the fact that it's sort of, um, in some ways, you know, it's been around for a while, but in other ways, it's really um, becoming, you know, high profile everywhere we look, people yeah. are talking about AI. And I think as a result of that, um, it's important to appreciate that even internationally, things like how best to assess risk in the context of AI is something that's also developing. Mm -hmm. So it's not like there is already a clear, um, agreed approach to this type of thing or that there's rules that we can go to and, and check that are unanimously accepted, etc. And I think what the um, the relevant authorities in Saudi Arabia, and particularly in the healthcare mm -hmm. sector, will need to do is continue to monitor developments elsewhere mm -hmm. so that that risk management aspect in particular um, benefits from what's going on abroad. Mm. Oh, sure, no, we, sure. we certainly see that. I mean, I think the regulators um, across the region, but we see it a lot in Saudi, is, are, they're very smart. No need to recreate something that's already been done. Yeah. Um, I think this also makes it uh, much easier for foreign companies when the framework in Saudi looks quite similar to what they're used to in the EU and yeah. or some of these um, developed. That is something that the, the regulators in the region are quite smart about. And we see that in Saudi, that instead of creating something from scratch, um, creating it new, they will adopt standards, they will adopt best practices um, from other countries. Um, and it's particularly looking at those who have a developed framework. Um, and, and I think that makes it quite easy for, for foreign companies coming in because the framework in Saudi in a lot of ways should look familiar. It's a bit, it should be a bit expected that there are guidance documents out, um, for AI machine learning medical devices and that the risks that are being, and the, and the evidence that needs to be submitted, it's quite similar to evidence that needs to be submitted in, in other jurisdictions as well. And so actually, this is something we've seen during, during Arab health, um, is this, um, focus though on, digitizing, digital, digital health, um, AI. Um, we had a conversation with Sadaya, who was here during Arab Health, and they have a whole department dedicated to this. Um, so so as, as you've mentioned, it's, it's, it's something that's not going away. The increase in adoption is here to stay. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we can expect evolving regulations um, in this space. So it's definitely a watch this space mm -hmm. kind of thing, as, it, as is the theme across the region. Yeah, for sure. So allow me to pick your brains on a topic which has been continuously discussed uh, around uh, health technology, which is um, data localization. Mm. Please, can you give us a overview of the current regulatory framework of uh, data localization in KSA? Yeah, mm. sure. So <clears throat> it's, it's an interesting space to be working in. I think broadly speaking, there are data protection, personal data protection considerations mm -hmm. that we need to think about. And there are also relevant considerations relating to data localization, particularly in the government sector, which is relevant when so many uh, hospitals and clinics, ex et cetera, in Saudi Arabia are government owned. Mm -hmm. yeah. On the personal data side of things, so there is a data protection law that it, it was originally published late 2021 mm -hmm. and supposed to come into effect in March 2022, mm -hmm. although the that was postponed, basically. Mm -hmm. And what has happened is that the responsible authority has taken feedback on the draft law and they're currently working on a new and improved law. Mm -hmm. Now, exactly what will happen with that new data protection law, it's a little bit unclear, but one issue that is relevant on the topic of data localization and so on is the uh, approach that it will take to transfers of personal data outside the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So where um, some of these solutions, whether they're AI-based solutions or not, where they're hosted on a cloud, there are um, considerations around the extent to which personal data can be sent outside the kingdom. Mm -hmm. My expectation on that is that 
there won't be a blanket prohibition on the use mm. of cloud services hosted outside the kingdom mm. in terms of like from a personal data perspective, but there will still be requirements. And of the draft that we've seen, there are specific restrictions relating to healthcare data. So I think, you know, we'd really need to scrutinize that particular personal data aspect. Separate to the personal data aspect, there is the question of the handling of data in a government context. Mm -hmm. So there are broad rules that essentially contemplate government sector entities ensuring that their data is hosted in the kingdom on data centers that are based in the kingdom and licensed to operate in the kingdom. So, you know, whether that means that vendors who are providing technology say in the AI space or in the healthcare space more generally, whether it means that that technology when servicing government sector hospitals needs to be hosted in the kingdom is something that really needs to be scrutinized properly. Mm. It will be interesting how this develops because we've seen that countries in the region have gone full stop localization 100%. But then realize, particularly in the healthcare space, that also inhibits quite a bit of innovation. Yep. Um, is cost prohibitive for some companies? Doesn't give um, you know the the access to that expertise that resides overseas to that database um, from which the AI or machine learning technology is drawing from. Um, and I think ultimately, even if the law in the first instance comes down there for a variety of re reasons, political or what have you, use cases, approved use cases, yep. and a pathway to to where there can be not a blanket exception, the data can go wherever, but what is the regulatory environment over data that fits those use cases and does need to be sent overseas for the benefit of the healthcare system, ultimately for the benefit of the patient. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the sort of the age old issue with um, cloud based services. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the key one of the key benefits to them is, um, you know, the fact that they can leverage um, data centers in different locations and high volumes of data and mm -hmm. and so on. An approach that resulted in a lot of localization in the data mm -hmm. space, it could be counterproductive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we do know this is a hot topic, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, we heard several talks by Sadaya and government, other governmental authorities, health tech, digital, AI, it's on everybody's agenda. And we have a Seha, the virtual hospital, um, in in Saudi, who is leveraging some of these technologies? Yeah, oh, you should definitely watch this space. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, it's a it's a watch this space. Um, as in any good environment, the pace of innovation is going much quicker than the pace of regulatory change. Yeah. This is where we want to be. This is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think that's probably, um, we, we could go on and on and on, I'm sure. Um, and we will in a minute, but I, um, I, I think for this session, we'll go ahead and close it here. Um, I just would like to say that, um, we are part of the, um, larger network of the healthcare and life sciences practice, practice group at Altamini, uh, with 17 offices across 10 jurisdictions, um, supporting clients in a variety of, of sectors. We talked about health tech today, but, um, the providers, um, the uh, pharmaceutical companies, medical devices, um, utilizing our on the ground expertise um, in healthcare, in digital data, in employment, in corporate structuring, you name it. So um, we will be watching this space and you can stay tuned for some further updates on a variety of healthcare and life science. Updates.